about the same height here. Oh, hello. Here we go. Hello, everybody. How we doing? Last session before lunch. I know y'all are excited for lunch. It's a nice day out here in uh, Phoenix. I'm a huge fan myself. I'm going to give everyone just a few more seconds to settle. Solopreneur planning. I know. They Is could. that what you want? Uh, he this one? That one? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Oh, we've got a few more people here. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome. Thank you for making the choice to come and learn about planning and organization for the solopreneur. I personally love seeing so many of those attending and hopefully betting on yourselves and embarking on a career that is hopefully fruitful and successful for all of you. Uh, Vicki and I have been to a few camps together. It's good to see you again in Phoenix. And... Uh, Let's give it up for Vicki. Excited to learn. Good morning. Hi, guys. Can you hear me with the mic? I'm like, OK, there. Sound, that sounds good. Uh, so you are here for planning and organization for the solopreneur. Um, I am Vicki Deluzio. You might have just heard my husband speak on some plug-in stuff um, and automation. Uh, I am a blogger. I own two blogs, Surprise AZ Mom and Fit Families Phoenix, and I'm also a real estate agent or realtor. I'm sure you guys have heard of those. Hopefully we are not bothering you. <laughs> oh, I'm getting some laughs about that. So why am I so passionate about planning? Because life happens and gets in the way, and you need a plan. And when life happens and gets in the way, you need to keep your reputation solid. So one year ago, I was standing on this stage, except at Galvanize, and I was talking about SEO on a panel. My life could not have been better. My blog was getting some national recognition. I was running my real estate business. I have three children who are eight, six, and five. I was homeschooling them. <laughs> I know, right? And I was driving around with my kids all the time. I was reviewing different places. My real estate was going super awesome. Um, I was helping my husband with his business. And I was helping my parents when they needed some help with their medical issues. <clears throat> my, my friends thought I was absolutely nuts. They're like, how are you doing all of this? I'd take a little swig of my probably fourth coffee of the day, and I'd be like, I am running on caffeine and adrenaline. This is life. So that's how my life was. I was just going for it. Oh, and I was training for my third half marathon. So my life was a little bit crazy. In August, I started feeling a little bit murky, but I'm the mom of three. I could not slow down. I just said, well, you know what? I got to keep on going. My husband was traveling a lot, so I did what moms do. I kept on going. Then September 1st happened, and my life completely changed. The day started out fine. My kids and I and my husband went to our community pool. But then in the afternoon, I went to my upstairs, and I started feeling paranoid. I have my psychology degree. And so when I started feeling paranoid, I was like, something isn't right. I've never felt paranoid in my life. Well, my husband came upstairs. He's like, what do you mean you feel paranoid? I said, I don't want to go down those stairs. He said, Vicki, we've been living in this house for almost five years. What do you mean you don't want to go down the stairs? I said, I don't like those stairs. He couldn't talk sense into me. And he said, we're going to the ER. We got to the ER with our three children who were with us. Once again, they were eight, six, and five at the time. And all of a sudden, I couldn't walk into the emergency room. Here I was, training for a half marathon, days before, and I could not, on my own two feet, walk into the emergency room. So we got into the triage section. Luckily, there was no one else in the waiting room. I sat down, and the nurse started asking me questions. At that point, I couldn't answer questions as, what is your name? What is your birth date? I couldn't answer at all. I was staring 
and there was no life in me. The nurse recognized these symptoms and asked my husband, has she ever had a seizure before? My husband said, no, she hasn't. At that moment, I started flailing. I had my first of three grand mal seizures that day. If you've never had a grand mal seizure or haven't ever seen one, I've never seen one, but I had three. It's pretty much your whole body shutting down. You have no control of your body. My brain was firing away, nerve impulses going crazy. So they whisked me into the emergency room away from everyone else. My kids saw all of this. And my husband later described it as, mom was kind of having a funny little dance that she was doing. They put me into a medical coma. At that point, they didn't know if I was brain dead. A month earlier, I was fine. So there I am in the hospital. I have three businesses. Goodness gracious. What am I to do? Well, I had a plan. I had put plans in place months before so that should something happen, my business could be sustained for a little bit of time and I would not have to worry about it. So, do you have a plan in place? That's a big question I'm asking you today. Do you have a plan so your business can be taken care of. Because if you have a business of your own, do you have someone to take over? We're gonna talk about all these things. My business right now has never been better. My reputation is solid. If you had not been in my inner circle, you would have never known anything was wrong. My business kept going. My business right now is going great. But when I woke up from that coma, I didn't know how to use my phone. I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. I couldn't really remember how to use a remote control. And my memory was kind of like 50 first states. Do you remember that movie with Drew Barrymore? Every 10 minutes, I'd recycle. I even called a doctor an elf at one point. Oopsie, the seizures kind of caused some issues where you see lights and stuff. And he came in and asked me some questions. And I looked at him, I'm like, are you gonna do a dance for me? Are you an elf? He might have a little reputation on his hands now. But I was, luckily I was a very nice patient. But my reputation remained, even though I went through all of that stuff. So. Do you have a plan as a solopreneur? So, let's talk about the plan. So I'm gonna make a really big assumption here today that you are at WordCamp because you like using technology. And I know what assumption means. It means it makes the uh, out of you and me, right? Okay, I'm gonna make, make a big jump and do that anyhow. Are you using an online checklist? Are you using a checklist? Or do you just jump in to your everyday and go, eh, we'll see what happens? Because if you are not running your business, your business is running you. Do you get an email from a client and just go, huh, you know what, I'll just attend to that now. And then three hours later, eh, there goes the day. Or are you making your day up and taking care of things? Because it's very easy for your day to just go away. Especially if you're a solopreneur, you work from home. How many people work from home? Woo, that's a lot of you. And then your day just goes away. Your day, I mean, you can just end up doing this, doing that, and then there goes your day. So are you doing, doing something to make a checklist? I love my online checklist because it's easy. I can always have it with me. I don't have to put down a piece of paper and I lose it. Boom, online checklist. As I go, I can just add to it. And I can see that I'm checking things off. Really easy there. Calendar apps. I hate planners. Tell you why I hate planners. Because you only get this much space in a planner, right? You can have six planners. I know a lot of homeschoolers who have five planners, three planners. But you only get so much space in a planner. 
So what do you do when you run out of a space in a planner? You make X's and stripes and marks to other places. Then you forget where you're supposed to be. In your calendar, are you, are you putting who you're supposed to meet every day, their contact information? It's a really good way to stay organized. When I was in the hospital, my husband knew exactly who to contact because it was in my calendar. He had access to my calendar and he was able to contact those people. It was easy. Every single time I make an appointment, I put who I'm supposed to con who I'm supposed to meet. It takes like one second. Then my brain is able to just go on with that. Because our brains are not able to remember everything. We easily get off track. Who was I supposed to call at that time? What is their phone number? Then you waste more time. Just put it all in a calendar app. My mom is infamous for getting those little bank things, those little calendars. Do you know those calendars? But you only get that much space. And she goes, yeah, but it's OK. I just like make a little circle and a square and stuff. I'm like, Mom, you forget all your appointments. She goes, you just can call and remind me, Mom. So, Vicki, just call and remind me when my appointments are. You have a smartphone. I'm like, Mom, you have a smartphone, too. You just use a calendar app. <sighs> I'll eventually get her to do it. That's right. Cloud-based filing systems. I love my cloud-based filing system because I can access all of my files on my computer or on my phone. Easy. I don't have to make it crazy. Just put it right there. And it's searchable. Make it so it's easy for yourself to find it later. I put everything by year, month, client. That's easy. Don't make it any crazy system. There's nothing crazy you have to do about that. Customer relationship management system. It's the Rolodex. I hope I'm not dating myself with that. Rolodex. I take everything and put it into my customer relationship management system. Every business card I get, whether you're going to be a customer or not, I put it in there. I put Everything that I get, I don't keep on business cards. I know you all make really pretty business cards. You want me to have a little filing system like baseball cards? That's too much for me. I put one month, one day a month, put it into my online checklist or my calendar app, put one day, put it all in all of those uh, business cards and put it into my drawer. One day a month, I take all of those business cards and I just put it into my CRM then I don't have that clutter. Thank you, Marie Kondo. Who's a Marie Kondo fan? You've been like watching that joy. Get rid of all those business cards. Sorry, guys. They're very pretty. I, I thank them all as I get rid of them, OK? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But then you, you put them in a system. Put them in a system. Then you can use them later. Tax information. My husband does my taxes. I'm very thankful. But. I know taxes are horrible. And you do not want to wait until the last minute to do your taxes. I am, I'm just going to say this, I am not a CPA and I am not a lawyer. Not a CPA, not a lawyer, OK? Right, OK. But you want to not mix business and pleasure. Do not use your same accounts. Do not mix that. I personally have a PLLC. Oops, sorry about that. I have a PLLC because I hold a professional license. I don't know what you need to do, but get yourself a separate account and make sure you're not waiting until the last minute to do your taxes. Keep that separated because you do not want to wait until the last minute to have someone else have to deal with that mess. When I was in the hospital, I signed my taxes. My husband was able to give that to me. I don't remember doing that, but it was legal because I signed it myself. <laughs> but in password managers, I don't know how many passwords I have. <laughs> I don't know how many sites I'm on. I'm probably on 400. <laughs> and that doesn't include all the shopping websites I am on. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's so many passwords. And then you get on those websites, and they, they make you change it every 120 days because they love to torture you. And it can't be, and those passwords can't be like the, the passwords that you had before. So then you start going through all the, the woodland creature animals. So you start with squirrels, and then you get to rabbits, and you forget which, which woodland creature you're on, and you get locked out of all your systems. So get yourself a good password management system. 
because otherwise it is so horrible to try to figure that out and then get locked out of your systems. All right. Do you have a network? Okay. Now you're going, wait a second, Vicki, I'm a solopreneur. I don't need anybody else. And I was, I was right along there with you. I, I worked at Target when I got out of college. I was the assistant store manager. And after I got out of that place, I know a lot of people love shopping there. I'm telling you, uh, I had my time there. Um, I, I was like, I don't need to do anything with people. And honestly, it couldn't be more wrong. You guys are here this weekend, and I hope you guys are networking. Solo entrepreneurship is not going it alone. You really need to be making a lot of connections. And I say, use your network to bridge your gaps. So that means you should be using a checklist to figure out what you're good at and what you're bad at. We all have things we also like to do and don't like to do. And if you don't know what you're good at and what you're not good at, ask a sibling or ask your mom. They will tell you. So use that network to help you. I, right now, with my, my epilepsy, I can't drive a car. Kind of makes showing houses a little bit difficult, right? Okay, Joe and Sally, you wanna go look at that house? I'm gonna go get an Uber. All right, so I'll meet there in 20 minutes. Yeah, it's kind of a problem, right? So what did I do? I used my network, and now I have my own real estate team. Now I use my network as an affiliate. So find those people who are in your own space. They, they can be your competitors that do something better than you. Set up an affiliate. So they can also be people who are completely different than you. Use your network, get a network. And a lot of people are like, oh, I tried that networking thing. Didn't work out for me. You weren't in the ne right networking group. There's a lot of them. And a lot of places, and doing face-to-face -face networking is so much better than online. You cannot get the same relationships online than, that you can face-to-face. -to -face. So today at lunch, I'm challenging you to sit next to someone you don't know and meet them. So I see, ah, you three, ha, 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 go sit next to someone else, ha, ha, just challenge you. Picking you out of the crowd. I, I'm really good at like going up to people and making them feel uncomfortable and then making them feel comfortable. So I'm gonna challenge you all to do that. So, um, um, and when the going gets tough, like when you're kind of stuck, are you with people who are going to help you? Are, are they going to validate your feelings or are they gonna challenge you? So sometimes you get stuck, you get in a rut and people are like, yeah, it's a rough time. Yeah, it's rough. Or they're gonna be like, well, try something new. You know, so a lot of times you just kind of get in that slump and you just don't want to do something different. Man, <laughs> I've been in a couple slumps the past couple months, September. I could have just sat down and gone, ugh, I'm done. That would have gotten me nowhere. So find people who challenge you. All right, backups for business. So where are your backup files? We talked about cloud-based systems. Don't rely on your laptop. If you've never had a laptop crash, I want to go with you and buy a lotto ticket with you. So you're just so lucky. I don't know how many laptops I've crashed. And you know, you can have either cloud-based, you can have an external hard drive. If you have an external hard drive, make sure that's not in a hot or too cold area. And who are your backups? So that's really important. So how was I able to keep going with my business? And no one knew that anything was really going on with me. My, my husband was able to take care of my stuff, but he knew he didn't run my business. He was just able to cancel some appointments. He had access to all my passwords, my email, and he knew where my backup files were. That's it. He wasn't going to try to run my business. He has his own business to run. He just spoke. He had enough to do. He had three kids he had to take care of and try to figure out my medical bills. Woo, well, we won't even talk about that. So that, that person isn't going to run your business. They're just going to parcel out things so that you don't lose your reputation. Because that's what you don't want. You don't want your clients who need something to not be taken care of to go, she didn't have a plan. He didn't have a plan for me. 
I mean, if I had a real estate transaction, if I was in the middle of one, they could have lost a house. They could have maybe not made a move because I fell sick. But because I had a plan, because I had all my files aligned, my husband would have been able to just pick out those files, send it to one of my, my um, affiliates, and it, the transaction would have gone through, no problem. It would have been as easy as that. But you need to have someone you trust to do this. Could be a sibling, could be a parent. They just need to have access to your passwords and, and some key important information. But that has to be something that you talk about. And a lot of people don't want to talk about that. And I started thinking about doing this speech in about October. And I was still really recovering. And I thought, am I really off base with this? Does, is this, does, does this need to be said? So I, I asked people. I asked four people. I asked one person I knew and three people I had just met in a networking group. One said, am I off base? Is this just me being, you know, very emotional? Am I just being crazy to start thinking about it? So one person told me that um, his mother passed away when he was 24. This was early 90s. And uh, she was a real estate agent. And she owned a great deal of uh, rental properties in the Phoenix area. He being a 24-year-old, he didn't really care what his mom did until she passed away. Then he realized he had no idea where the rental properties were, who were in the rental properties, and how much they owed. Oh, that's, you know, 90s. That's kind of before the internet. Kind of an issue, probate court. Then another woman lost her husband about two years ago. They never really spoke about the, the business he ran. She took care of the kids. He did his thing. He died unexpectedly. So she got his computer, got the files that she could find, headed over to the CPA. She's like, I don't know. Here you go. Take as much money as you can. I have no idea. CPA's business caught on fire. She kind of thinks that maybe there's a lien on the business. Doesn't know if there was an LLC on the business. Kind of a big deal. Are you talking about your business with someone else in your life? Another person I, I do know, she was like, your, your issue scared me. You were perfectly healthy, and you just, whoop, I hired someone else to know. And then uh, someone else uh, said the husband passed away. They, she had no access to even their personal information, let alone his business information. So she didn't know any of their passwords to any of their, of their stuff. She just kind of hovered over the keyboard and hoped it came to her. It did. She's very lucky. So for my husband, I know who his key partners are. I come to the WordPress with him, so I, I get to meet the people. And that's more than a lot of other people do. But is there someone in your life that you can share your information with? They don't, know, they don't need to know how to run your business. And I'm not saying that they do need to know how to run your business. But they should know some people in your life, know how to get access to your phone, know at least where your files are. It's very important. And some people don't want to talk about it. It's kind of like talking about a will. It's like, I don't want to talk about it. I wouldn't have wanted to talk about it. I would have never guessed this would have happened to me. Um, so my medical issues, we don't know what's going on with me. No clue. They have no answers for why anything happened to me. I'm going to Mayo Clinic. We're hoping for the best. Some of the doctors at my first hospital lost some of my cancer test. So <laughs> kind of a bummer right there. So it has to get redone. It was a spinal tap that I had done twice. So <laughs> that kind of sucks a little bit. But I'm standing up here today because I felt like I really needed to impart information to you. Right uh, this year, I've been working with Walmart. It's kind of a cool deal. Cirque du Soleil, some 
top notch, yeah, some top notch restaurants in the area. So it's not over until it's over for me. So I hope like you really are using this time to today to think about planning your business, not just tomorrow, but going forward to be networking with lots of people. I'm challenging you to sit next to people that you don't know. It's hard. It really is sometimes hard. I'll put up my, this is how you can reach me. I run two blogs. And if you need to know anything about where to move in the Valley, you can reach me too. I have an awesome team. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. And don't be shy because a lot of people haven't been asking questions and then people are coming up, but other people need to hear questions too. And I'm like super not shy. So, yes. Uh, my husband actually makes, makes the one, um, and his is Amplify plug, plug in, so you can check that out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, what checklist do you use? Uh, what checklist I use? Actually, I use um, Google Keep. Yep. Google Keep. Keep. Yep, it's right on my phone. Mm hmm. So I get to, yes. You set up a PLC for your uh, real estate. Yes. Do you advise using it for your? private practice as well? So it depends on what you're, you're looking for. I'm not a tax professional so or a lawyer, so you would have to look into that yourself on what that would work best. So I, I hands off on that. <laughs> yes? Is there a particular calendar app that you find better than others? I, so I like Google because I can see what my husband is doing, too. <laughs> I'm a little spy. So we, because, um, because I can't drive, uh, I, we also schedule everything so I can see when he's on the phone, he can see my stuff, and then we can separate our stuff. A lot of people use a lot of different things. There are tons of different, uh, different apps out there. So, you know, it all depends on your personal preference. But I, uh, someone else said something the other day, and it's like, don't get mired in just trying to find the perfect one. Just use one because, oh, and don't make one. <laughs> Don't like get, get all mired in like trying to find the perfect one. Just use one. I and I personally hate sticky notes. Don't use sticky notes. They don't work in the desert and they don't work in the humidity. Someone else said yes. Uh, what about liability insurance? Have you thought about that as far as like insurance companies that might be able to get you insurance against it? Is that something? Uh, because I'm a real estate agent, my my brokerage holds holds the uh, uh, insurance for that. But um, it depends on your, your individual need. Um, so you'd want to see uh, whatever your business is. So I hands off of that for lawyer purposes. Um, anyone else? Mm, yes? It, for me, I do it basically on, I have long-term checklists, I have short-term checklists. It honestly it depends on what your business is. So uh, I do it based on things that, that come up in my head. I'm kind of a creative person and it just kind of pops in. Um, mine even includes my grocery list, so I don't forget to do that. Um, and because you know I'm dealing with some medical issues, uh, I've learned that I need to incorporate some more reminders with stuff. Um, and I think we just need to make sure that we're putting stuff in our checklist. I think we all often think we're going to remember more than we actually do. I mean, how, how often do you wake up in the middle of the night, you're like, that's a great idea, I should write that down, and you fall back to sleep, and you're like, oh. There's a great idea in the middle of the night, and I don't remember what it was. So, anyone else? Yes. Uh, I use LastPass. I use LastPass. Yeah, there's quite a few of them, but I mean, honestly, just use one <laughs> because there's. So, I I I was against it for a long time, and then my husband's like, "Are you using all the same password for everything?" Guilty. <laughs> so, and then you know, and then I had a lot of websites that were changing every 120 days because they like torturing me. Um, pretty much, that was all I, I could say for it. And and uh, you know, I was getting mad at the computer. <laughs> I, I believe in getting mad at inanimate things. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's very justifiable. So uh, yeah. 
Last pass. Mm -hmm. Last pass. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I think you have to pay for it for the the phone or I don't I don't know. I don't remember which one you have to pay for. Yeah, yeah. Everything is renewable, and that's how they get you because they want you to pay. So, but it's, it is what it is. Um, anyone else? You can ask questions, please. No? All right. I know you're all hungry. I won't keep you. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.